Hey, this is Daniel Schaefer with Force Power Studios. This is our first video tutorial. Uh, this tutorial is going to be about how to make a light whip. Uh, it's similar to a lightsaber, but the rotoscoping technique is slightly different. So let's start. Um, I have my footage right here. Uh, this is Adam Winrich. He's a whip enthusiast, maker, slash performer. Um, you can see his stuff at Adam CWM on YouTube. Um, I'm using some of his footage that I got off YouTube because it was a black whip on a white background. So I thought, well, that would be pretty easy to see from a frame. So I'll use that. Well, I've already got a whole bunch of keyframes uh, pre-made that I've been working on for a very, very, very long time. This is 200 some odd keyframes right here. It'll definitely take up a lot of your time. So you must be very patient with this. Uh, you can see that uh, on top of the whip, I have six keyframes. Um, you can use, I wouldn't recommend using any more than six keyframes. And I also wouldn't recommend using any less than four. So there's a tip for you. It's basically just frame by frame uh, going and um, doing keyframe, hitting next frame, and then readjusting the mask over and over and over. Um, the mask is directly on the footage. Um, it's just a line. You don't have to enclose it. It's just a line. Um, and just adjusting the line to the contour of the whip. So that's basically just what you have to do instead of just moving four points. For a lightsaber, it's just moving all of those to fit the contour of the whip. So now that you've got all your keyframes in there, what you want to do is you want to um, go to Effect. Generate, there you go, generate stroke. And now you've got a stroke that um, replaces the mask right on top of the whip. So with that, you're going to copy the mask, uh, select the mask, edit, copy. And then you're gonna make, gonna make a new layer. Layer, new solid, um, make comp size. Uh, I'm gonna rename it whip. Uh, make comp size, black, okay. Then you're going to paste it on that new black layer. And on that new black layer, you're going to go to effect stroke, make it about 1.5 in brush size. Then you're going to go to effect blur and sharpen, Gaussian blur, and then effect color correction, color balance. And with all those selected, you're going to make four copies of the whip. I'm on a Mac, so it's Command D, one, two, three. So you have four uh, copies. So uh, now you have those four, you want to select whip, the fourth whip, and uh, press enter to rename it and rename it core, C-O-R-E, core. And with that core, you want to get rid of, um, well, don't get rid of, don't get rid of it, but just kind of close it. You're not, you're not going to be using it. Um, so, of course, you want to f uh, blur it by one. Just blur it one, and then um, go to toggle switches, and you want to make, you want to keep this normal. Just keep it normal on there, and you want to make that on transparent for the stroke. Um, and the reason I had, and, uh, the reason I had you do uh, rename it was because that is uh, different settings than what the whips are going to be. For the second whip, what you want to do for the whip three, two, and one, you want to make it, uh, you want to keep it on the original image. Um, and uh, for the third, you want to blur it 10. For the second, you want to blur it 20. And for the first, you want to blur it 40. And also for whip, whip one, two, and three, you want to go to go to the mode and change it, change them all to add. Uh, whip three, add. Whip two, add. And whip one, add. And there you go. That's you have just made a light whip. It's white, but it's a light whip. <clears throat> now uh, you have to colorize it. Uh, with one, um, let's see, let's make it blue. Blue's a, blue's a nice color. Um, 
do the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. You see, you've already got a blue effect. Oh, another very important thing preserve the luminosity on all of them. Every single one you want to preserve the luminosity because if you don't, it'll, you'll get a really weird effect. So for all, for one, two, and three, make them all blue or whatever color you want to make them. Just depends on what you like. I think blue just, I think blue works fine. So that's what we'll do. Make it blue. Everything's blue. Everything's all blue. So we're good. Now you've made it. It follows the whip just fine. Um, there you go. Got a nice looking whip that follows the, um, the whip underneath it. Now that you have that, what you want to do is you want to go down to the original footage and turn off the stroke effect. And that, because that stroke effect makes it look thicker and like, I, I just think it looks better without the original stroke effect. You can get rid of it. I prefer to get rid of it um, because the keyframes are still there. You're not getting rid of the mask. You're just getting rid of the effect. Um, and you still have a very nice looking whip. Um, another thing is that I'm not going to show you on this tutorial because it would take too long, but whenever it goes behind, you're going to want to mask that out. Um, there are plenty of tutorials online that show you how to mask it out. I'm not going to waste, waste time showing you how to mask it out. But one other thing is whenever uh, the whip cracks right there, the, whip's good, the whip cracks right there. Oh, whip that load. Bam. Whip cracked. Um, it's a light whip, so it's going to have a different form of crack besides the sound. I mean, you're going to want to add a sound effect, but you're want to going to add a visual effect as well. It cracks right there, I'm assuming, because the next frame it comes back, so I'm going to assume it cracks right there. What you want to do is you want to make a new layer, layer, new solid. Um, you can make this flare or crack. I'm going to say it's flare, make comp size, okay. And on that layer, flare, you want to add effect. Um, I know there's a optical flare on the actual thing, but I don't know where it is. So I'm just going to use Video Copilot optical flare. And you want to make it on add. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll move it over here off to the side, like it's cracking on the side. I'm going to increase the brightness. Just a little bit, not that much. Uh, maybe about 250. Um, gonna move it over here, and I'm gonna animate it so it'll come on right when it cracks, and then it'll slow and it'll, it'll dissipate. So on that one, you want to animate, you want to animate the brightness. So what we'll do is add a keyframe there, then go down to the effects optical flares, and the keyframes for the brightness appear. You want to go back one frame and turn the brightness all the way down to zero. And boom! There's a giant optical flare. One, two, three. Uh, we'll say we'll say three frames. One, two, three. We'll say three frames, uh, and that's enough for an optical. And that's enough for an optical flare. So. Whatever you're doing it, boom. It's just big light. Whoosh. No, no, that doesn't seem too that doesn't seem long enough, does it? Um so what we'll do we'll make it longer. We'll increase the length of the effect and maybe brighten it up a little bit. Uh we'll zoom it out over here. Um We'll, we'll increase a lot of it. So we'll make it brighter. Uh, so pull it out and now let's see what we got. Um, yeah, I think that looks pretty good, but that's basically how you make a light whip effect. I'm Daniel Shaper, and this has been Force Power Studios with their first tutorial. We hope you liked it.